This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Carolina's already had to take out their catcher, uh, Cole Messina, who was a uh, first teamer. Uh, looked like he took a foul ball off his helmet and trying to come back and catch the next half inning, and they pulled him. And they, they've been dealing with injuries as well, but that's the one thing that you don't want to deal with here in Hoover are the injuries. And Carolina might have just might have just had one for one of their more important players. Funky Co Medina, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's right. I got texts and, and Facebook messages the other when, when Arkansas played Carolina asked, why did you not call him Funky Cole Messina? You said because it was a low hanging fruit and we leave that for me. That's just your because for your I, other just host. Because yeah. I totally forgot about it uh, and you're on top of things. Uh, Alyssa Orange is also on top of things. Good morning, Alyssa. How are you today? Oh, good morning, guys. Just had my coffee, so I'm doing good. Nice. Yeah, I've, I had coffee at 6 in the morning today, uh, <laughs> anticipating an earlier show, a, mid- we- a, mid- a mid-afternoon a mid game, and then laundry later on tonight. So it's a big it's a big day here in Hoover. And the laundry is maybe the – nah, the baseball game is the more important part. What's, uh, what's important today? Is winning important today, Alyssa? Yeah, I, I don't think it's the most important thing. Um, you know, we, we talked about this earlier in the week, Phil, and, and my feelings on this SEC tournament for Arkansas is just go out there and, and get guys some reps that haven't got some reps, get guys some more ABs to get them ready for next weekend. If you win, it's icing on the cake. If you don't, it's okay because you're still going to be a national seed coming back to Fayetteville. Makes sense. And, and get healthy, just like you said, Phil. Uh, Alyssa, the last thing we want is for some, one of our catchers to get hurt or one of our guys to get hurt. We're just kind of getting everybody back at the right time. And, and, and hopefully Stovall, uh, he, he steps up at second base. No, Stovall's done for yeah. the year. You oh, mean Holt. Well, Holt, it's I'm Holt. sorry. Yeah. yeah, Holt, right. Yeah, uh, the other Peyton, exactly. The other Peyton. <laughs> the other Peyton. So, I, I, yeah, and you know, you're exactly right, Matt. I mean, you look a couple years ago, it was this tournament where Brady Slavens had that freak trip at first base and hurt himself, and it's just like things happen, and, and that's not what you wanted. Bill made a great point. Like, these are ball players; They, they don't want to tiptoe around things. They want to play, and injuries are part of the game. Uh, but you also definitely want to be careful. Dave Van Horn talked yesterday about at practice, after practice, they were throwing the football around and running routes, and some guys were going a little too hard, and he goes, man, all I kept thinking was, that looks a lot of fun, but I hope nobody gets hurt. And he had to get on some guys to kind of be like, okay, bring it down a little bit. We don't need to get you hurt We're running a route playing fake football after practice. So they're, they're, they've obviously understood that they can't risk anything with the way that the season has already gone. You can't play with fire right now. I just, in this kind of year, you know, and I understand the approach of, of feeling like there's some sort of fatalism around the program because of all the injuries. You know, but every time you come here to Hoover there's that feeling too. Oh, don't cross the street. Make sure uh, make sure you take the elevator instead of the stairs. You know, being being overly cautious. I think though, and Matt, you can speak to this better than than I think more than anyone else on our network. If you're an athlete and you're not playing at a hundred percent, if you're if you're in the back of your mind thinking I can't do anything that's going to get me hurt, sometimes you get hurt. You get it. You got to have focus. You got to play the game like you always play it. And, and coaches that tell you this from uh, <clears throat> and one of the first things that my, you know, my dad was one of my first coaches, and they'll tell you you go out there and you play. You don't play timid. If you're out there and you're playing timid, you're playing scared. That's when injuries happen. When we're out there competing, you go out there and you play full speed, and you'll be surprised how how healthy you end up afterwards. Alyssa, it's a fine line for this team to walk, but it's one that they're obviously trying to walk. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like you manifest it if you think about it too much, right? You just put it in the universe because it's on your mind. You know, th- these guys know what they're doing. Uh, and I think at this point, you just got to play baseball. And at the end of the day, you can't blame injuries on anything. You know, this no one means for any of those things to happen it's just part of the game it's just really easy to blame the sec tournament for those injuries because of what people feel about the tournament and what it how it can impact the ncaa tournament um and we see it with south carolina we're about to see if you know hopefully their catcher uh is just has a, a a minor injury and they're back next week but you would hate to see this season end for some reason because of uh what just happened so um, it is what it is, but you just got to play baseball and, you know, 
not try to overthink anything. Well, Phil and Alyssa, how, what do you think the SEC needs to do to make more weight for the SEC tournament? Do you think it is just kind of uh, it, it's it's almost if if it has this feel of like. Uh, Nick Smith coming to Arkansas. If he could have went straight to the pros, he would have went straight to the pros and never st- stepped foot. Some of these teams, if they could have, they wouldn't even show up to Hoover, it seems like. They just want to get to to their regional. How do you make the SEC tournament carry a little more weight, or do, or do you not? Yeah, you know, I don't know if you can. There, there was something someone suggested on Ask Mike earlier in the week about, well, what if you just let the top six teams have a bye and then the bottom six teams play an SEC tournament, and the the counter there, and I understand what they were trying to point out is, you now have the best six teams in the league not playing in a conference tournament where the conference tournament winner gets an automatic buy to the NCAA tournament. And that's not fair. You're giving a tournament championship to not one of the top six teams in the league. Do you make it more of a round-robin style so you know you're at least going to play a couple games and maybe that gets guys so you know you're at least playing – two games or three games when you go and it's not just a one and done because you would hate to go play one game lose and maybe injure someone I don't know I I just think it it's it's just at a point in the season where the regular season is over everyone's looking at the NCAA tournament and and unless you're a team like maybe a Texas A&M who needs to bolster their resume or a team uh you know, like a, a Missouri, Missouri or, or Auburn who came in needing to maybe bolster some stuff. You don't really care. I just don't know how to change that. That's why I call this the limbo season. This is <clears throat> this mm-hmm. is like you know waiting waiting for a week to be allowed through the pearly gates of the NCAA tournament, and that that's what this <laughs> week is about. And I think. You know, the, the the time for the change, if there is a change in location or, or the way the tournament is built up, it's when A&M and mm-hmm. it's when uh, Texas and Oklahoma join after next season. So mm-hmm. I think we'll mm-hmm. we'll see it like this for another year. What if we, what if we did a, uh, what if this, this tournament went away and it was just a SEC all-star game, East versus West all-star? Oh, man. People would complain, too. People would complain and say, oh, well, you're just going to hurt yourself in that. But that would be a lot of fun. I've never thought about that before because nobody does college all-star games anymore. I mean, there's one in football, but that's more thats more. these guys are ready for the draft and that kind of thing. I, that's an intriguing idea, Alyssa, one that I can probably see never comes to fruition. But I love, yeah, never going to happen. <laughs> yeah, because it's too good of an idea is what it is. Uh, softball. It would be so fun. i got to yeah. ask about softball. Um, they just run into a hot team. There are a lot of yeah. folks who... You know, the, the softball experts that said this is this Oregon team might be able to come through the Fayetteville Regional, and they did, and they did it loudly. What happened? Yeah, well, two things happened. I think for Arkansas, um, just offensively hit a, hit a wall and could not manufacture enough offense to get through this regional. And then once Oregon starts getting to Shanice Delph, they're going to get to everybody else. If you can get to Shanice, you're going to get through the rest of that that pitching staff. And it just wasn't Arkansas's year. They've got good pieces and a lot of pieces for the future. But I think this really showed that they were missing pieces like a Danielle Gibson and a KB side and a Lenny Malkin on those rosters, even just from a leadership standpoint. And then you've got an Oregon team who came in here with swagger came in here with some vengeance and the way that they carried themselves even in just watching them at practice in the in the press conference they had before the regional started they came in here on a mission and I don't think that there's anything wrong with saying that they're going to go to Stillwater this upcoming weekend and beat Oklahoma State and head to Oklahoma City that is the kind of attitude they're playing with right now. So how how do we view the season uh, for softball? Because we're in this position now where, you know, each year it felt like there was a step forward, you know, from an SEC regular season championship to a tournament championship to winning a regional and and getting a home super and, and falling just a win short. There's always been a step forward. So how are we supposed to take this year in which there was just by looking at the at the results from the NCAA tournament there was a slight step backwards Corey in her opening statement after that loss on Sunday is she hopes that loss and 
I still had 40 wins. And they still were, uh, you know, a, a host seed. And they still competed in the SEC. And they still had the number one recruiting class coming in this season. Um, they're still a very good program. And Arkansas softball and where Courtney Dyfel has taken it is so far from where it was when I got here in 2013 and went before Courtney Dyfel got here. And so we got to kind of remember that sometimes we think and just say, what have you done for me right now mentality, but you got to remember what this team was able to accomplish. And they still recruit at a very high level. And some teams just get beat. That's how it is. Some of the top teams, look at UCLA. UCLA was the number two overall seed, and they lost their very first two games and they were out. And you can't just lay that on UCLA and say that their, their season was a failure, even though they didn't meet their expectations. They're still a good program, and Arkansas is still a good program. Last thing, and it's about men's basketball. There are there's still still three Razorbacks or guys that could come back to Arkansas who have their name in the draft. Uh, Devo Davis, Jordan Walsh, L. Ellis. Tremont Mark pulled his name out of the draft the other day. I would assume Ellis will do the same thing. Uh, Devo, I don't think is really. You know, he wasn't at the combine. He's, you know, I don't think he's not going to be drafted. Um, the mm-hmm. one guy would be Jordan Walsh. What, what do you, what do you think we might see this next <laughs> week? Because he's got a week until he's got to take his name out or stay in. He does. Exactly. Well, what I, what I think, and what I want are two very different things. I think I've said this a ton on the show. I want Jordan Walsh to come back. I think he would be uh, set up for success in a higher draft pick in a year with one more year of college basketball under his belt he can make a lot more money i don't think he's going to i think he's going to stay in the draft um i think Debo comes back but with jordan walsh i i want him to i just don't think it's going to happen i hope i'm wrong but i don't think i am i'm with you Alyssa. i, I was hoping this nil deal i think the nil is going to be really beneficial to quarterbacks and then nba guys that are on that bubble that uh, not and and I think Jordan Walsh can play in the NBA for a decade. I, I just think he's a couple years away. But I think that NIL deal could help uh, quarterbacks stay in another year. And, and people like Jordan Walsh, that you know, you could be a second-round pick or undrafted. You're going to have to do the G League thing. Or if you come back to Arkansas, no reason he can't be a first-round pick in next year's draft. Absolutely. And, and that's where we're seeing the NIL talk, right? We're seeing guys come through. We just saw... Hunter Dickinson go to Kansas and said that he may, he's going to make more NIL money at Kansas than he was at Michigan. People are moving with the dollar signs, and that's a lot of influence. Can we see that influence at Arkansas get Jordan Walsh back? I have no idea. BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season, as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL hockey, right down to UFC and boxing. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way for you to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's B L E A V. B L E A V. Bet online. Where the game starts.